so I will be uh, talking about, uh, as my uh, title says, measurement and feedback driven entanglement transition and the probabilistic control of chaos. Uh, so this is work I did with actually people who, uh, a lot of people who are, are here, uh, Tom Medicola, Shiram Ganeshan in our chair, uh, Jed Pixley, um, and this uh, work that's on the archive here. Uh, and I'll also be talking about some uh, extension of, of, of this work on the archive, some, uh, some stabilizers, which um, is a paper in preparation. Um, so uh, before I get started, I um, will, like first to just acknowledge my collaborators and also acknowledge an affiliation that doesn't appear on, on, on the uh, on the paper. Uh, this uh, during during the pandemic, me and Sharon would uh, go to to this coffee shop in Highland Park, New Jersey, and uh, the this particular model uh, came out of discussions that we had uh, here. Uh, the uh, the ideas around it have been been, been floating around from all of us for for, for, for quite a while. Um, so, uh, this is going on. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, first, so as an outline, sort of what you should kind of uh, take away from this this talk is one: the measurement-induced phase transition. Uh, these uh, the usual um, kind of uh, version that we've seen of these. Uh, they have a post-selection uh, problem, so it's quite hard—not impossible, but quite hard—to see them uh, in experiment all by themselves. Um, two, there's a, there's something in classical chaos where you can uh, control these the chaotic phases probabilistically. And these actually lead to a dynamic phase transition that's been known about since uh, the, the late 1990s. Um, uh, third, uh, when you, whenever you take these classical models and you, quanti uh, you, you make quantum versions of them, they naturally have both measurements, feedback, and uh, an entanglement transition that's sort of heralded by an order parameter um, that, 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 that we can see. Um, and lastly, uh, that the, the entanglement uh, transition can actually be, even be separated from what we'll call the control transition. Uh, and we see this quite naturally occur in, in, a, in the stabilizer model. And I hope by the end of the talk, you'll actually uh, know what I'm plotting over here too. This is the, kind of the, uh, the essence of the, the dynamics of our model. Um, so first, just uh, we've heard a bit about this uh, already, but uh, just to, um, just as a brief overview of the measurement-induced phase transition. Uh, so this is uh, this is a phase transition that that occurs with the rate of measurements in a in a system. So, in, in the usual way, we have uh, just a brickwork pattern of the, the, these lines are all qubits. The uh, horizontal lines are uh, unitary gates. They're uh, completely random usually. Um, or random with some distribution. Uh, the blue dots are, are where we insert Krauss operators, and these can either be uh, the identities, which is basically don't do anything to, to the circuit, or you, 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 you put a measurement in and you get an up, or you put a measurement in and you get a down. Um, very much what, uh, what uh, Jed was talking about earlier in the morning. Um, and if we write out the, the, the dynamics, we can write a quantum channel for this, and uh, we, we get a, this combination of unitaries and crosses, and all of these together make up um, one, um, um, one trajectory of our total density matrix. So our total density matrix is, is a sum over all the trajectories, uh, but all of the transitions that, 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 will, that, um, that, we, that are usually talked about here uh, occur for these trajectories here and not for the uh, overall entanglement, or not for, all, for the, um, uh, the density matrix that's uh, averaged over them. So this also sh shows up uh, when you uh, unravel a Louisville and uh, dynamics. And, and in that case, uh, this, this is, uh, these transitions sort of depend on the unraveling. Um, but what you see is if you increase the rate of measurement, that's this P here, uh, that you actually get um, at, at a p equals zero, it's volume law. There's no measurements whatsoever. So um, entanglement sort of spreads through the system. Uh, at p equals one, you're measuring all of the time. Every time step, you're, you're doing a measurement. So everything disentangles. That's sort of trivially area law. Uh, but the, uh, the interesting thing that was found in, in these initial papers was that uh, 
there's actually a critical rate where you go from volume law to area law. And this is an, an actual true blue phase transition that's occurring in the dynamics. And so when I say volume law and area law, I'm usually referring to something like the, the von Neumann um, 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 entropy where we cut the system in half. So this A you can imagine is the, uh, the qubits over on the left. Um, and you uh, find the, the reduced density matrix and you compute either, um, it, you compute this and you see that it scales with the volume of A or that uh, it scales with the boundary of A and that would be an, an area law. For 1D, of course, the boundary is just a single point. So it doesn't really um, scale. Um, so, so one of the, uh, one of the problems with this is that this is um, a, a transition in the, the trajectories themselves. And we sort of run into problems from just quantum mechanics 101. Um, first, we, we, we recall from when we first learned quantum mechanics as babies that uh, the expectation values are actually averages. Uh, so you, are, you do a whole bunch of measurements and you, get, and you have to average all of those at the end. Um, so even if we do construct this, um, this density matrix here, we have to run it a lot of times in order to actually compute this expectation value. Um, and, as a, and as an aside, this is just for a linear observable. For nonlinear observables like, uh, like entanglement, it's even more complicated. Uh, you need copies of your system in order to, uh, to do this. Um, uh, second, um, yeah, uh, individual experimental runs. Uh, this is kind of what I was uh, 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 referring to. I got these two mixed up, I suppose. The, the, uh, you only get eigenstates of, of some operator when you do your experimental run. Um, you won't actually get the expectation value itself. Um, so, and the last problem that's a, that's a pretty big problem is that you have to post-select. So you have to make sure, if you actually wanna measure this expectation value on this density matrix here, you have to make sure you get that same, those same measurement outcomes over and over again in order to actually perform this, this average. Uh, so this takes this, uh, you can just do a back of the envelope calculation for, uh, for a reasonable system size uh, and, and get that, you know, we'll take a Google of years to actually uh, compute this, which I guess Google has now done that. Um, so, um, so, um, but there's another way of envisioning uh, this um, phase transition, and this is as a uh, purity transition. Um, and this was uh, formulated by uh, Gollins and Hughes. Um, and this is, is, is quite nice. You can imagine instead of, uh, instead of um, just having some pure state that you evolve and it entangles, you start out with just an infinite temperature density matrix. Um, and as you... Um, uh, as you evolve the, the system under the Krauss operators I showed you, no matter what, those, no matter what the measurement outcomes, this doesn't change. It's just always infinite temperature. Um, and so you, you, all, you, you kind of trivially won't see anything in the average density matrix. Um, so, but if, if we were to decompose it into these trajectories, uh, as Golans and Hughes showed, you actually get this phase diagram where you go from a mixed phase where this row uh, stays a stays a, uh, a a density matrix with uh, rank greater than one for uh, for very for exponential and system size times, um, and after some critical PC, it actually purifies to a pure to just a pure state. Um, but that's in these tra these trajectories here. Um, so this is this is kind of also naturally captured by something called uh, the uh, and. Uh, ancilla probe. And in order to, uh, to see this, you actually start with your system in some pure state. You couple in an ancilla and you entangle it. And so now if you were to uh, take this state, which is entangled with your system, if you were to trace out your ancilla, you actually get that you're in a, you're in a, a density matrix. Um, now it's of rank two. Um, and now you can, and this is actually very convenient to simulate because all you have to do is watch as this density matrix loses its rank from two to one, and that is when it purifies. And uh, that will be equivalent, exactly equivalent to the um, ancilla becoming disentangled with the, with the system. Um, so the, and the, sort of an information theoretic way of thinking of, of this is that the, the, this qubit of information that you put into the system through this ancilla is preserved in the mixed phase and it's lost in the, in, in the pure phase. 
Uh, so that's why some people like to think of this as something like an encoding transition. Yeah. Does it matter how you choose the two states or? Uh, they need to be um, or orthogonal. Also actually two points. One, they, 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 have, they definitely have to be two orthogonal states, uh, but it does actually matter a little bit in, in, in if, these state, if, if these are spread out, if, like what the entanglement of these states are. Mm -hmm. If they're spread out to the system or if they're uh, local, they'll both still see the transition and be good probes, but they'll behave a little bit differently from each other. Thanks. Um, so um, my, um, my question here, and the, like the question that we were battering around is, can, can we actually take advantage of this information that's either stored in the system or lost into the environment? Um, and, and so one of the hints here is that the, is that the information is at least partially um, imprinted onto the measurement record uh, um, itself. Um, and so the very naive idea, which uh, I don't know how to make this work at all, but I just threw it in for the hell of it. Uh, the, like, can, uh, can the system actually use its own information? And this might happen in the volume law phase. And, and, and so could you actually take advantage of that, of that resource? And as far as I could tell, like this, this seems like it should probably require some nonlinearities that's not really present in quantum mechanics. Um, but maybe a better question is, uh, uh, can, can the uh, bath itself be engineered to have both memory uh, of what's been measured and can it feed back that onto the system uh, itself? Uh, and this, this sort of inherently re uh, re relies on the measurements being able to, to get useful information out of the system. Uh, and it, it therefore it has to be in the area law phase. This is when you can't actually store information to the system, it's lost, and the, and the environment knows what that information is now. Um, so a sketch of how we might expect this to, to look is that we still have our entanglement transition here at this PC, but we might get some P control, so a point where we can actually control the, uh, the system, direct it onto some state that we care about maybe, uh, and that must occur after the entanglement uh, transition. So, how do we actually do this feedback? Well, so this is the math behind this is actually quite quite simple. You can see this in just a, a regular qubit. Um, so uh, when you're uh, if you perform unitaries after you do your your measurement based on that, you can uh, direct your state to what you'd like. Uh, so now these are my my cross operators from before, but I've inserted two new um, unitary matrices that occur after my projection uh, onto either zero or one. Um, and the moment I put these in, if I tune them in the right way, then my infinite temperature density matrix will no longer go to the infinite temperature density matrix. In particular, uh, for just a single qubit, this is the projection uh, on, onto one of the uh, um, sigma z um, eigenstates and the other one. But if I just uh, flip it, if I, so if I measure like a, a, like a one and I flip it to, to zero, that will, uh, and I do nothing if I measure a zero, that'll send this immediately to the zero state. Just sort of trivially, it's, a, it's just a reset operation. Um, but this simple math you can actually put um, in, into, the, uh, into the measurement, do phase transitions, and now there's been a number of, of, uh, of papers, including ours, that uh, have used this, this idea to see some interesting uh, physics. So now the, ins the inspiration for, for us in our model, though, is, uh, is actually came from this uh, classical um, control of, of chaos. And so um, for this idea, I, I, I like to think of this as kind of like a transition um, in ergodicity, where the, the measurement-induced phase transition is like an, an ergodic to a non-ergodic dynamic transition. Um, and, and, and so we kind of, I got kind of think of it like this, where, um, you have your Hilbert space. This is a complex projective space for your, um, for your qubits. And, and the dynamics, uh, less than PC, uh, they explore an extensive part of the Hilbert space. The sort of probability distribution over all the space hits all of the states. Um, but overall, uh, once you go past the transition, the, the dynamics become bound to a sub-extensive region. And these are the area law states. Um, so, uh, in, in a similar manner, if we go to the probabilistic control of chaos, uh, in chaos, you sort of uh, your, your your dynamics are also exploring an extensive part of now phase space, but you might have these little um, the this purple these purple dots here representing a periodic orbit, 
uh, that if you were to sit exactly on it, you would never leave that orbit. Um, but there, that's an unstable orbit. If you go a little bit away from it, you'll then explore all of the phase space. But in the probabilistic control of chaos, you can actually see that um, you can, uh, in terms of, uh, of some rate that I'll talk about, you can actually control onto these, uh, these orbits. And so you're no longer exploring all of, all of phase space. So what is the idea for this uh, classical control of, uh, of chaos? And how does it sort of naturally lead us to this idea of feedback? Um, so uh, for this, we actually choose a, a rate, I'll call it P, just because we've been using our, that all already for the, uh, um, for the measurement use phase transition. Uh, and, we, and we apply our control uh, now stochastically to our, to our system. And so at a very high level, what this means is with a probability one minus P will apply some chaotic map to our system, which is trying to scramble everything up. And then with, with probability P, we'll, we'll actually check if we're close to the orbit. So if we're in one of these circles, and if we are in one of these uh, circles, we'll just nudge the, uh, uh, the trajectory towards the periodic orbit. So we're not gonna put it on there, we just sort of nudge it. Um, and in terms of this, uh, how much you push the, uh, uh, the, the orbit versus this, this P, you actually get a, uh, um, a true blue uh, dynamic phase transition from some uncontrolled region where you're really exploring an extensive part of phase space to one where you're kind of more and more stuck to these periodic um, orbits. Um, and for a lot of this talk, we'll actually fix how much that we push. So we're mostly just varying P and we'll get some one dimensional line. So the conjecture that, uh, that we had is that um, the uncontrolled map and its air is ergodic nature, they provide a support to actually store quantum information and they can host an entanglement transition. Um, and we'll see a proof of principle and something that's called the Bernoulli map. So what is the, the Bernoulli map? It's, it's in a sense one of the most simple chaotic maps you can imagine. The phase space is just the interval zero to one. And the map is just, you take a number within that interval and you multiply it by two and you mod out by one. So I like to think of it like this, where you have, uh, this is the interval zero to one. And this right here is one half. Uh, this, this red line gets stretched all the way zero to one. And this blue also gets stretched, but it has to be modded out. So it's just brought back and sits on top of here. Uh, because there's both red and blue on top of each other, this leads to a Kolmogorov Sinai entropy of log two. Um, and if we take a random X in the interval zero to one, it's nearly always irrational. And the Bernoulli map explores all of phase space. And that looks something like this. Thanks to Tom for this uh, animation. Um, and, uh, but also this, uh, this, this Bernoulli map, it, it um, hosts unstable periodic orbits. And these are basically all of the rational numbers. So um, a particularly simple one though that we'll focus on is one third to two thirds. Uh, and if I multiply this by two, I go to two thirds, I multiply by two again and, and mod, I'll go back to one third and they just sort of go back and forth. So this is what we're gonna try to control onto one of these orbits. So how do we actually do the control? Uh, so uh, this here is the, is, the, um, is, is the math for basically what this picture is, is showing. Now, if, if we take this from zero to one half, we basically just like shrink the interval around one third. And we do the same thing uh, over around two thirds. And so every time we do the control, we sort of just try to shrink that interval more and more. So you, all you have to do is check if your orbit is over here or if it's over here, and then you know whether to push it towards one third or two thirds. And here, uh, the parameter that controls how much we, we push is this uh, A, which, I'll, which is one half. And that's sort of why this is X over two. Um, so this is a particularly uh, nice value to choose because P control ends up uh, being exactly uh, one half here, um, as, as was, uh, has uh, been previously shown. Though you should be careful if you go to the, uh, this paper or the 96 paper, you, if, if you plug in this value, you'll actually not get one half. And they actually made a very subtle mistake in their calculation that they corrected in a later paper, uh, which took us a while to figure out. But, um, uh, but yeah, this, this, is the, this is the correct value. 
So uh, in order to get to, to qubits in quantum information, uh, we actually take uh, our, our number between zero and one and we decimal expand it. Uh, so now if we take this value here and we do two X uh, mod one, uh, multiplication by two just shifts the whole bit string and chops off the last qubit. Um, so uh, what that means is if we have this, if we have like L equals six, so it's just six qubits, uh, we shift everything over and we drop uh, S1. Then there's just a, a natural question of what goes in this uh, blue question mark here. Well, as a first guess, you might just say, oh, well, I can just take this S1 that I chopped off and stick it on the end of my bit string. Uh, but this has a problem. This is actually just a simple like staircase of swaps. Uh, and the longest periodic orbit that you could possibly make with this operation is of order L. Uh, not anything that could be close to ergodic, anything that could even like, explore um, uh, an extensive fraction of your uh, Hilbert space. Um, so why is this? This is actually because this is mimicking now a rational number uh, that goes uh, just to two to the one over two to the sixth, more or less. Um, but the solution is that we can mimic a rationality by, by putting in a uh, scrambler. And what the scrambler uh, does, so if, if we think about the classical version, so this T here, this is just the swap operation where I sort of move all my qubits over, stick S1 at the end. But now I can put a scrambler in here that just takes my last three qubits and just scrambles them up. And that, this in particular is uh, this, uh, we actually use this, this, this map here. Uh, we just really chose one at random that had, that had one big long orbit. Um, and this is actually sufficient to get you um, uh, periodic orbits, which are now extensive. So they, they grow with uh, an exponential in, in L. And when we go to quantum, uh, to the quantum version, we'll replace the scrambler with a Haar random circuit. And that'll introduce entanglement into the system naturally. So um, now what do we do for control? So this operation of sort of squeezing onto one or um, to um, pushing things onto one third and two thirds uh, require a couple of different things. One is we need to divide by two. Divide by two just means shift my bits over to the right. Uh, so I have to lop off uh, SL now and I get a zero popping up here. Um, and then I have to actually do this um, addition operation, which is a little bit uh, tricky, but it modifies everything sufficiently that you do actually push towards these, these two um, uh, po um, points. Um, and these two points are, are actually uh, one third and two thirds. If you write them out in bit strings, they're actually the two uh, uh, nail states. So we're actually pushing onto the two possible nail states and they'll go between each other as the chaotic map is applied. Um, so uh, for the quantum version of this, we'll, we'll so we actually um, need to, uh, this is where we actually need to put in both measurement and feedback. So uh, this last qubit SL that we lopped off, uh, what we can do is we can actually measure it. And once we measure it, we can then force it to be zero. Uh, so if we got a one, we just set it to zero. And once we do that, then we can just basically move it to the end of our bit string here. And it becomes this zero right here. Okay, and, uh, and that sort of um, and encapsulates how we can actually uh, con con uh, control the, the system. So these, we have three, these three operations. You uh, re reset the last qubit, you shift everything to the right, uh, and then you have this controlled, uh, controlled adder, which actually will add either one third or two thirds um, depending on uh, a qubit. All right. So uh, what does this actually, ha what actually happens now in the, um, uh, in the uh, transition itself for the bit string? So it's actually kind of nice. You, 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 all of your physics is actually uh, controlled by something we call the first domain wall. Um, and this, you can imagine you have a nail state sitting over here to the left. And at some point, it's going to not be the nail state anymore. It's going to be more of a disordered, uh, like a combination of ones and zeros. Uh, so the chaotic map actually moves this domain wall to the left uh, and sort of increases the disordered region. And the control moves it to the right and, in, and increases the controlled region. Um, and we can track this um, classically. And so this is with a, with a, with a thousand bits, not qubits. 
Um, and we can uh, see that uh, at P is like 0.75, it just, it just flies off to, to one side or it flies off to the other, depending on what, which one wins, chaotic or control. Um, but this is actually just a, uh, um, uh, this is actually just a uh, random walk with a bias of uh, 2P minus one. Uh, and as a result of this, we can say that since it's a bias random walk with two p of two p minus one, if p is one half, that's exactly where the transition is. But that's where we just have a unbiased random walk. Um, and the uh, in the position of this domain wall, uh, it um, the square of it uh, goes like the goes like t. So it it spreads just as you'd expect for a random walk. It's, this is a diffusion. And therefore, we kind of expect a dynamic exponent of uh, two. So we can confirm that we actually have this classical transition now um, on the bits them, themselves by looking at this nail order parameter. Uh, and the nail order parameter can be can be collapsed with some uh, scaling function. And this is what we get for L is twenty to L is two hundred and forty, uh, and we get a, a very nice crossing and a very nice scaling collapse which numerically give us uh, this nu is uh, of one and uh, P control is 0.5. And this Z of two, it comes from fitting the, uh, the square of how the domain wall moves. And we can match this to the analytics where we know that, uh, that um, precisely nu is equal to one, Z is two and P control is, is one half. Um, so that's, that's good, we've, we've confirmed all that. So now we wanna go quantum. So the main thing that we want to do to go quantum is on these very last bits, we had a permutation matrix and we're going to replace it with a uh, har random two qubit gain. Um, so this is going to lead to some, uh, you, uh, some, some operation, which is now a combination of uh, SQM and the uh, swap operations. Um, uh, but the control map itself is, un is unchanged. Um, so uh, now, uh, the Bernoulli map itself has been changed to this quantum mechanical object, which can introduce entanglement with probability one minus P. Um, and, and the control is, like I said, completely unchanged and done with probability P. So uh, we can go back to the domain wall picture now and try to see what happens with the entanglement. And that's where this picture comes from. So this picture is actually uh, telling us everything um, the, uh, the how bright this is, is what the entanglement is if you were to do a, a cut and look at how the left and the right are entangled with each other. Uh, so it's naturally bright in the middle just because there's more degrees of freedom if you cut in the middle versus cutting on the sides. Um, but you, you can see that in the volume law phase, the domain wall just flies off to the edge and sort of sticks on the edge while entanglement increases in the middle. Uh, over in the controlled region, it flies over to the right uh, and you just um, more or less get a controlled phase everywhere. And right in the middle, it random walks around while the entanglement uh, is allowed to sort of follow in its wake. Um, and so we can, uh, and, and so yeah, uh, now quantum mechanically, we can even um, measure where the, uh, this domain wall size is by, by computing this, these expectation values. All right. So, uh, the first thing though, that, um, that we need to do with the quantum mechanical version is just confirm that we still have the order parameter transition itself. Uh, and indeed we, we do. Um, if, if we look at this object, we still get a nice crossing. Uh, P control is larger error bars now, but we get about 0.48 uh, and a new very close to one. Uh, but we can come in and now we can do more, more, more quantum things. So we can go back to our Ancilla probe to see how purification is occurring in the system. Um, and if we uh, do that and we go to a time that's uh, L squared over, over two, so we've applied L squared uh, either control or Bernoulli maps, uh, we get a very nice uh, crossing where on one side, the, um, the system is trying to remain in a pure state and on the other is trying to um, disentangle the ancilla or trying to purify. Um, so, and if we collapse this, we also get very similar exponents as we did for the order parameter itself. We can also look at half cut and the half cut actually collapses to the right of 0.5. It doesn't really collapse to the left. Um, and 
uh, there we get a very similar uh, P control and um, uh, Newton. All right, so, uh, but I, I should note that we can't rule out the possibility of a separate uh, control and entanglement uh, transition. So we can also look at the uh, dynamics of these, of these objects and we sort of see one, we can pull out of a Z of two by looking at how the ancilla actually purifies in, in, in time. So this is scaled by T over uh, L, um, L to the 2.1 is what the best was. And all the curves were aligned right on top of each other. Uh, and also, if you look at half cut and how it scales in time, it's where it goes with the square root of, uh, of, of T. So we're seeing um, some diffusive dynamics that are, uh, that are consistent with the random walk picture that we have for the first, uh, first domain wall. All right. And so just as a, as a summary slide, uh, we're able to get all of these, these exponents out here, which match very, very well with, the, with what we know from just the classical transition itself. Um, but now we were able to put quantum information into the ergodic side and, and it's quite, it's quite robust in this system itself. So um, as a last uh, bit, I'll explain a little bit of what we did for the stabilizer version. For the stabilizer version, we actually have to change things up a little bit uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is we had a, we had a hard random circuit on two qubits here. We'll actually replace that with still a two qubit gate but it'll be a, now one of these Clifford gates. Um, also, we have to get rid of the adder. This was um, uh, th this here is actually can't be uh, generally re re represented with a Clifford gate. Uh, but this actually isn't too big of a problem. This actually means that we now control onto the all zero state, so a ferromagnetic state, um, and we we have an order parameter for that, which is just the magnetization itself, um, and we'll and Classically, we have a very, very similar uh, phase transition. Um, but now that we, are, we're, uh, we, have a, uh, we have Clifford, we can do entanglement up to much larger system sizes. This is, uh, yeah. So, uh, so the control uh, transition itself, it, it survives. And so this is, these are Clifford simulations now, the magnetization. Uh, it, it, we get very, very well new and Z. If you look at how the ancilla entropy goes, it also dies off T over L squared. And we also get this diffusive growth of uh, the entanglement. Now, all this is just confirms what we had before, but for larger system sizes with stabilizer circuits. Uh, the new thing though, is actually, if we, look, if we look at how the ancilla itself purifies, um, it turns out that uh, you might notice that this probability where this crossing is, is much less than 0.5. It's at 0.26, 266. Um, and so now actually the entanglement transition is occurring before the control transition. Um, and very, uh, very uh, creepily, we're actually getting uh, some, so some exponents of, uh, that are very close to the random one plus one D Clifford from some of the original measurement induced phase transition models. Um, but our Z looks like it's two, but we know that Z should be one for the measurement induced phase transition. Uh, so why is, why is this? Well, there's two reasons why, why, this is a, why this is occurring. The first thing to discuss is, is the fact that um, the entanglement transition is actually splitting off because uh, Clifford gates don't, uh, don't generically entangle like a Haar random uh, gate does. Uh, in fact, you can start with a product state and you can see that uh, only 40% only of the time will actually get entangle a product uh, state of just two qubits. Um, and if you start with a Bell state, you can actually disentangle it uh, about 60% um, about of the time. So uh, you have to be, uh, so, these, so as, a, as a result, we can actually um, move the entanglement transition down because the, the case that we're applying don't just generically put entanglement into the system. Um, yeah. The other, um, the other thing to mention is that we can look at how the half cut in, in entanglement actually grows. And we do get that, it, that at this transition of 0.266, we get log growth of the entanglement. Um, but if, if we know that T goes as L to the Z, if we plug uh, that into this expression to try to see how it goes in time, uh, we get that there should be a one over Z here. Uh, however, if we look at the time dynamics of the half cut, 
we actually get that uh, this Z very much looks like it should be one. So we, this, this, this line here is, is a guide with this uh, alpha being put in here. And these are the actual the curves from the computations. Um, but uh, we notice that down here, this isn't log T, this is log of T divided by L. Uh, so the effective, time, the effective time step at criticality here um, has, a, has effectively changed from being one of our original time steps to being L of our time steps. Uh, and this sort of reordering of, uh, of, of, the, of the time step leads us naturally to get uh, an actual Z of, um, of one. And this all comes from the fact that the log has to pull down the exponent. Um, and uh, so I'll skip over exactly why you can understand this in term, terms of uh, like the fact that you can actually get something that looks kind of like a brickwork if you unravel your swaps. Um, and just uh, end with uh, putting this, this comparison slide up. So thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, Justin. Uh, questions? Can you just target a, uh, I, how important is it that you target a, a cycle? Uh, can you just target a particular bit string? Uh, that's, that's a very good question. So, um, so, it, so one thing that's actually quite important to, in order for this to, to work is that you find some, um, uh, some unstable fixed point. Um, so what seems to happen, uh, so now, now I'm gonna speculate a little bit if, if you choose something that's not an unstable fixed point. If you do, if you do that, then um, I, I think it might be something more like a strange attractor or the, that you start to actually control onto where it keeps trying to wander off because it can't actually stay there with the chaotic uh, dynamics. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, won't, it, won't, it won't visit everywhere. I can't ask questions. I'm a co-author. So any other? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Is it more like the um, uh, purification picture, or like the original um, transition to volume law picture? This. Oh, uh, so uh, I, I'd say like the the purification dynamics gets it uh, gets all the all all, all the features um, every time. But one thing that's actually occurring uh, here is that, so the fact that we're getting everything that's more or less the classical exponents, the control transition kind of swamps out anything that's, that would have come from the entanglement transition. And we, and we see kind of interestingly that whenever we are able to split off the entanglement transition, we do get things that, that will, can be described by the volume law, area law, that, that, and the log growth at the transition. All of that sort of splits off in the Clifford case. Uh, and you see all that here, but you still get the uh, control transition over here. So it's like when you move this over here, all all this all these critical properties get sort of swamped away by uh, all the control properties uh, that you see here. Yeah. Uh, so um, if I understand correctly, the fact that the transition split will not solve the post-selection problem. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that will not solve the the post post selection problem. It's more of a statement that uh, when you have the uh, when when you have an ergodic phase over here, that it is at least possible to push the entanglement transition up to the control transition itself, more than actually fully solving the post selection problem. Uh, I was wondering in the classical case. I mean, is what's how do they have a decode? Can one have a decoder? How does the decoder work in the classical? I mean, is there is there uh, an understanding of that? Can one build a decoder in one of the papers? Yeah, that's a that's that's a good question. Uh, so in our version, because our chaotic map is unitary, the decoder would simply be running the classical simulation. Uh, if you if you actually go back to the Bernoulli map. You technically couldn't decode it at all because of the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy. Every time you try to trace something back, you get to two other points that it could have come from. So you so you would lose information even in the chaotic case for the true Bernoulli map itself. Uh, can you comment on how this compare with the other feedback protocols, the other papers that you list? 
Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So one, uh, so some other papers in this have, have done uh, like the actual brickwork where you like, so for instance, one of the other papers controls on onto a ferromagnetic state with the, um, uh, with the, um, uh, the actual brickwork uh, pattern. And what you have to do there, you, so one thing that actually is a, a common theme is you have to actually make a, um, uh, um, some unstable fixed point in the orbit. And so the way they do that in, uh, in the brickwork paper is, is, is actually by, instead of having a four by four Haar unitary, it's like a three by three, but if you are on a one one state, it's special. It's not gonna actually get kicked off of the one one state. Uh, and, and so you have to build that into your chaotic uh, dynamics in order to then be able to control onto that later. So that's, that's one very important aspect that I think goes through all of these, all of these works. You have to build an unstable fixed point into your chaotic dynamics. No, I think the most you can do is bind is um, bind it to um, uh, bind your entanglement um, to your to a, a control transition. You sort of are are forcing it to occur at the same at the same spot. So in this uh, this kind of synchron classical synchronization, they have these master slave techniques also, right? So sort of you can slave right. uh, to, uh, so you can use some of those techniques also here to sort of bind it to more uh, inter I don't know more complicated uh, cycles or even other. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I so I, I I'm, I'm not actually from. Uh, so basically, you use two copies. So one copy, let's say have some, some attractor, some limit cycle, right. and then you can sort of feed it into uh, the other ones, which is maybe chaotic, but due to this master slave, you can sort of uh, project into a lower dimensional space. And so uh, uh, you can I, control the chaos also that way, I mean, chaos or synchronization. I see, and, and the then systems this like, is also probabilistic as well? Uh, no, it's uh, not uh, probabilistic. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I see, I see. No. yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, because uh, like there's like these, these Two, two paradigms of like the probabilistic and then the not. So I'm not familiar with, with that one, but it'd be interesting to see if you can get some, and you could put quantum information to something like that too. I think that would also be kind of, kind of neat. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's thank Justin again.